Cool. So, John Sukanik. Yep. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being a being a part of it. To say nothing of the honor of being your first guest. Yeah, right. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, we had talked a lot before. Yep. Um, my father-in-law was the first one that told me about your story. Okay. Um, he sent me a Seattle Times article uh, talking about your your catch, and so John is the the man who plays catch every day. I'm the guy. I'm so. the guy, and I get that all the time. People who recognize me, and they'll be like, oh, are you the guy that plays catch? And I'm like, I, I guess. I guess that's what I've become. Are they like, hey, where's the ball? I want to play catch. Well, what's funny is, you know, I, I carry it with me a lot now. Wherever I go, I'll always have a ball and a glove in my car, and sometimes if I'm getting out to go in to a restaurant or something, I'll put a ball in my pocket just so I'm never – I, yeah. I, it's my own thing, but I think it would be weird if somebody recognized me and was like, hey, let's play catch, and I didn't have right. an opportunity. Right. So my kids tease me because I'm usually found with a ball and a glove, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually carrying. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, if you wanted, wanted to start from the top and tell us who you are, your story, and just start from the top. Sure. So um, nobody super important, John Sukanik is my name. Live in Washougal. Um, Huge baseball fan. I played college football at at Washington State 100 years ago, but I would have traded all of that ability to be able to hit a curveball or play third base or something. So uh, love baseball, total baseball fan. Love the Mariners. Um, That's how we first kind of connected outside of catch is, is love for the Mariners. So I guess the, the, the short answer, which isn't a short answer, is a little over a year ago, 485 days ago to be exact, March 2nd, 2022. It was the day um, that they canceled the start of the season because of the labor dispute. Right. Uh, kind of a dark day for baseball fans. And, you know, I, have, I had opening day tickets, and I look forward to the season every year, and I was kind of in a bad mood about it. And everything I heard and read was that this was going to be a long – lockout season might be in jeopardy that type of stuff and so I was just kind of on Twitter looking for something positive about baseball because everything I was getting was negative and I stumbled on a podcast and the name of the podcast was the baseball bucket list and I thought well that's kind of a cool title I mean I have a sports bucket list and you know I want to be to every park I want to see a no hitter someday so I thought maybe I'll give it a listen and I started listening to it and one of the first episodes I listened to introduced me to a man named Ethan Bryan and Ethan lives just outside of Kansas City in Springfield, Missouri. And in 2018, he, as far as I can tell, this is his idea. And he came up with the idea to try to play catch every day for a year. And he called it Catch 365. And as I listened to this podcast, they talked about how he did it, how he went about it, kind of some of the stories, who he found to play catch with. And the more I listened to it, the more I couldn't get it out of my head. I really became obsessed with it and I just thought that's a cool idea I I hadn't I love baseball I love playing catch I hadn't played catch in a couple of years because nobody just plays catch anymore right and I thought what a cool idea I wonder if I could do it that's literally how it started with that thought I wonder if I could do it every day for a year so I went home that night and I told my family at dinner and I said hey I heard about this idea (laughs) and my wife looked at me and said oh that's nice dear you know pass the ketchup yeah (laughs) And I have two boys, uh, they're older, and they just said, Dad, this is dumb. This is the dumbest idea I've ever heard, you know. And I said, well, I'm going to try it anyway. So get ready because you guys might be a part of it. And the first night, it was 9 o'clock at night. It was dark and raining. And I went into my son's room, and I said, hey, let's go outside and play catch. And he's like, why? It's dark and raining at (laughs) 9 o'clock. I don't know where my glove is, is what he told me. And I said, just humor me. And he said, is this that dumb thing you talked about at dinner? I said, yes. (laughs) So I went outside with my son, and we played catch in the rain for 10 minutes, and that was day one. And 485 days later, haven't missed a day, and I'm here talking to you about it. And in between those 485 days, um, almost 700 different people, um, multiple states, multiple areas all around the Northwest. I've been on the news. I've been on podcasts, radio shows. I've played with celebrities. I've played with strangers. Uh, policemen, firemen, homeless people in the park, the guy that delivered my pizza, about anybody I could think to ask to play catch. Mm -hmm. And it took on a life of its own. It became something I didn't realize it would become. 
Um, but most importantly, it became something that I loved to do. And um, the original goal was 365. And we decided that day on 365, I had the chance to play with Ken Griffey Jr., uh, which is silly. We'll get into that in a second. Right. Yeah. And I, I just, it was something I loved to do, and I decided to keep going. And, um, and here we are. And now your goal is Cal Ripken, <laughs> maybe? So the joke that I get most often is uh, you're familiar with Forrest Gump, right? In the movie, yeah. he just runs. Right. And there's really no reason he's just running. You know, <laughs> I'm just running. Yeah. And so people have said, now I'm the Forrest Gump of playing catch. The original goal was 365. I did it. And now I'm just going. And I don't know. Someday we'll be done. Someday it'll just be time to be time to be done. Um, my dad teases me that I should chase Ripken. You know, and as, and baseball fans know that's a sacred number, 2632. So do I have it in me to play catch for 2,632 days? Uh, I did the math. It's like seven and a half years. Yeah. So that's daunting. But as somebody pointed out to me, I'm already a year and a half in. So we'll see. I figure tongue in cheek a little, if I get close and I can get word to Ripken, wouldn't he have to come? He would. Yeah. Absolutely. Wouldn't he have to come and play on day 2632? And I guess, would you pick, pick Seattle to play catch in or would you go to Baltimore? I'd probably that? go to him. Yeah, for I'd sure. probably go to him. <laughs> so, um, so we'll see. There's really no, um, there is a reason for it. I, I love it. It's something I love to do, but as far as an active goal, um, it's just the streak. Now it, it's, I love to do it. It's fun to do. If I can't find anybody out in the world, I'm playing catch with my kids in the backyard. What's better than that? Right. And, um, you know, someday it'll, it'll be time to be done or it'll end on its, of its own, uh, of its own accord. And, uh, until then we're just playing. Was there a first time that you played catch to, to during the streak to where you were like, Hey, this is kind of turning into something. It, it's kind of funny. So there were a couple. So on day one was my son. Day two was my son. Day three was my wife, right? Just people in my house. Yeah. Day four ended up being a Saturday. And it was, I thought, I'm going to go play with my dad. My dad lives in Hazeldale. So from my front door to my dad's is about 25 minutes. See him all the time. We go to ball games. Good relationship, right? It's not, we're, you know, we have a good relationship. Yeah. And I drove out there. And I knocked on his door, and he answered the door. He's like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I said, I just came to play catch with you. And he didn't know anything about this yet because it's day four. Yeah. Hadn't told anybody <laughs> but my family. And he said, no, seriously, what's wrong? And I said, no, <laughs> Dad, I drove it. I just came out here to play catch with you. And he looked at me and goes, okay, that's great. What, what's wrong? Right. <laughs> and I said, literally nothing. I, and he goes, you know, when was the last time you just drove out here for no reason? And, and that kind of hit me. Yeah. And I thought – I'm 25 minutes away from my dad. How many people can't play catch with their dad? How many people won't play catch with their dad? Mine's 25 minutes away. And the look on his face when I just showed up for no reason other than to play catch was kind of emotional for me. And we went in the backyard, we start playing catch and I started crying and my dad's like, okay, seriously, like what is wrong? <laughs> like he thought I had cancer or something. Right. Yeah, right. And it, that was kind of the first inkling of there, there might be something to this. It might not just be as silly as playing catch with people. And, um, short couple weeks after that, you know, I, I started, you know, playing with anybody that I could play with asking strangers and, and just kind of figuring out how this would go. And I shared this story with you earlier, but in the first month I ended up in Portland and I was at a deli with my wife and we had lunch, we were having lunch. And I walk out of the deli and there's uh, some picnic tables out there and there's a man sitting there and he was wearing a baseball cap. I hadn't played catch yet that day. And I thought, he's wearing a ball cap, right? I'll Fair go ask this, yeah. I'll go ask this guy. <laughs> it was an angel's cap, which, you know, I'm surprised <laughs> that I went. It's not an Astros cap. Thank you, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have done it if right. it was an Astros <laughs> cap, but I figured the angels in. Yeah. So I go over to him and I said, hey, I'm doing this thing. And I... And I recognize that it's weird to go approach a stranger and I'm a big guy. And so you got to be careful, right? You walk up like, <laughs> right. Hey, I got a van. You want to go play catch <laughs> right. over by the van? And so I sort of developed this spiel and I hadn't really perfected it yet, but it's pretty much like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. And I know this is going to sound weird, but <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to play catch every day for a year. Is there any way you'd throw the ball back and forth with me for a couple minutes? Mm -hmm. And so I said that to him and my wife was over there watching and he looked at me and he said, 
I love baseball. I used to play when I was younger. I coached my kids. I'm a big fan. He said, four years ago, I had a massive stroke and almost died. And I had to learn to walk and talk and eat and everything again. And I was like, wow. And he goes, I, I haven't touched a ball since. I don't know that I can throw and catch a baseball. And I thought, well, are you willing to try? And that's just the thought that came into my head. So I asked him, are you willing to try? And he said, yeah, do you have a glove? And I said, yeah, I carry him in the car. <laughs> and so I went, so on a sidewalk in Portland in front of a deli with a man I've never met, we started playing catch. And I throw him the ball and he catches the ball and he looks at it. And the look he had on his face, he got emotional and he threw it back. And we played catch for 10 or 10 minutes or so. And he didn't, we didn't say a ton. We talked about his kids and his recovery and the silly experiment that I was trying. And we get done. And he comes over and I said, can we take a picture? I took a picture with everybody that I played with. And he gave me the, the biggest hug. And he looked at me and he goes, whatever you do, you need to finish this. He goes, this will make a difference to people. He goes, it did to me. He said, I, I didn't think I'd ever play catch again. So thank you for asking a complete stranger. And wow. I, said, I said, thank you for trusting yeah. a stranger, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a two-way street. And we had a nice little moment, and I got his information. And I, you know, I said, I'm going to post it on Twitter. And, it'll... and I get in the car to go home, and my wife is sitting there. And I look at her, and she's got tears in her eyes. And she looks at me, and she says, I think I get it. This isn't about baseball, is it? I thought this was a dumb baseball thing you were doing. She goes, this is about people. And I said, yeah, I think you're right. I think this is going to be about people. And over the next year plus now, that's what I found out to be true almost every day was that it has very little to do with baseball. It's about people and connecting with people. Right. And it just happens that playing catch with somebody is the perfect vehicle to see. you're in the moment together you're sitting there we got to make eye contact right. with each other you got to watch the ball we're not on our phones and when you do that it's crazy how often you connect with somebody and something cool happens um so i'd say by about that time which is in the first month is when i first started thinking okay like buckle up <laughs> you know this this might end up being cool and it never wasn't cool whether it was something like that or playing with my kid, or playing with my dad, or you know, Ken Griffey Jr. Right. It never disappointed me, and um, that's not me. That's the game. That's catch. That's baseball. That's connecting with people, and it was really kind of humbling to be a part of. Yeah, that's awesome. What was the the farthest that you've traveled and played catch with someone? Kansas City. Kansas City. I flew to Kansas City. So uh, we mentioned Ethan Bryan. Um, earlier in, in kind of the origin story of this, and he lives outside of Kansas City. And when, when I first decided, when I first heard about him and decided to do this, I reached out to him on social media and I said, hey, I heard about your thing, heard about your book. Just want you to know I'm going to try it. I'm just this guy, I live in Washougal, you know. Yeah. I'm just going to try this. And he said to me, he said, do it. He goes, it'll change your life. And I thought, you know, what's this, you know. Just playing, I didn't believe, right? I'm just playing catch. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how right he was. But as it went on, he became a really big supporter of mine. He would message me all the time. Oh, that was a great story you posted. Or, you know, oh, you hit 100 days or you hit 150 days. Like, keep going. You're yeah. doing. And we became internet friends, I right. guess. So as it, as it developed and I thought, I'm going to make it. Like, I got, I got a handle on what I'm doing now. I'm going to make this. I had this nagging feeling that... I needed to have him be a part of it. And he had joked about coming out to Portland to play. And I had joked about going back and it was really kind of a field of dreams moment for me. Right. I kept hearing the voice go the <laughs> distance, you know, and I told my wife, I remember the first time I told my wife, she said, we are not flying to Kansas city to play catch with a stranger in some cornfield. Right. And that's a very fair response, right? Hey, I need to fly to Kansas city to meet a guy I don't know. And so, um, I couldn't get it out of my head and I felt more and more like if I made it 365 days and he wasn't a part of it, I'd, I'd feel like it was incomplete. So being a Mariner nerd, they're having a good season, right? And it was fun. And I happened at the end of September last year, the Mariners were going to be in Kansas city. Oh, awesome. And I thought that was the baseball gods yeah. showing me, right? You look, if not now. And I went to my wife and I said, I, I gotta go. 
you know. And of course, yeah. she thought it was just a ploy to get to a mariner, <laughs> you know. And you know, luckily for me, she's wonderful. She's super supportive. She did some, you know, if we cash in these miles and do this and this, <laughs> and so we went. And so I called him up and I said, hey, if I make it to Kansas City, and I, you know, would you go to a Royals Mariners game with me and play catch? And he's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And so we did. He he drove up and and we went to the stadium and. We, d- we decided to meet behind the big crown scoreboard. There's yeah. a big field out there. And I remember I walked around the corner, and I saw him. And he was maybe 100 yards away. I've never, never met this guy, right? My wife's with me, and, and she's like, I wonder what he's going to do. And he, he just starts running towards <laughs> me. It was like a movie really? scene, right? Yeah, yeah. He just starts He'd running. in your arms. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, right? He's a, he's a littler guy. I'm a big guy. And he kind of did. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like this – and he gave me the biggest hug, and he looked at me and goes, I can't believe you're here. And I said, what do you mean? You started this whole thing. <laughs> like, you, of all people, you should believe that I'm here. And we just had a great time. It was like we were old friends. And we watched the game together. Uh, we told stories. He told me stuff about his catch journey. I talked about mine. It was like we had been friends for forever. And, uh, and I had joked with people before I, let, I went that this was a silly thing to do. And it was awesome. It wasn't silly at all. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the farthest that I went. Um, I was constantly amazed by how far people would come to me. Um, I had people fly from Vegas. I had people drive from Boise, Idaho. Specifically just to come meet you. Some. Some would. They were doing something. Yeah. yeah. Like I I had a guy reach out to me and he said, hey, I live in Minnesota. And I'm like, (laughs) he goes, I saw your story on Twitter. Right. And he goes, so cool. I want to be a part of it. He said, I have a, like a three hour layover at the Portland airport. Okay. He goes, if I find a way to come find you, I'm like, yeah, dude. So did you go play catch outside of PDX? Yeah. He took an Uber over to 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 Vancouver. Oh wow. Okay. So, right. So he leaves the airport (laughs) and comes over to, to a park in downtown Vancouver. We played catch for 20 minutes or so and took a picture and he Ubered back to the airport and my flight's about to leave. (laughs) Right. And and, I, and, you know, people would drive up from Eugene, and, and somebody came through Vegas. They were in town to visit their parents, and they had seen my story and came, wanted to play catch. And so it was crazy to me that it never wasn't humbling to me that somebody out there I don't know was willing to come find me and play catch. Right. And that was really cool, and it, and it happened a lot. So... Um, more than me being willing to go places, um, I was I was touched by how often people would travel to come be a part of it. I you know one, I had a guy drive up from Southern Oregon, and it was it was three hours or so, and middle of the day, and uh, he drove up. We met at a park during my lunch break. We played catch for twenty minutes, and he got in the car and drove home. And I asked him, why would you do that? Like yeah. that? And he said, there's just something about what you're doing. And I just want to be a part of it. Right. And yeah. uh, cool, emotional for me, humbling for me. And, and he wasn't the only one. And that was, uh, that was surprising, but also really, really cool for me yeah. to, to be a part of that. Yeah, because, I mean, everyone has their own baseball story of how they got into liking the sport and appreciating it a lot of people you know played up to a certain point and have been fans of baseball their entire lives but so that's like a a shared you know uh, like and interest that you guys have and it's just it's really deep as you've seen it is and and one of the questions I asked so I asked everybody that I played with the first question I asked anybody was when was the last time you played catch and what I learned is nobody plays catch right anymore it's not a common thing right unless you have a kid that's playing Mm -hmm. or you're camping for some reason, people take the gloves and they play catch when they're camping. Um, but even me, who, like, I love baseball. I hadn't played catch in three or four years, mm-hmm. right? I had to go find my glove. And, um, and so I would, I would ask people these questions, and, and the answers I got were, you know, two or three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 wow. years. Yeah. Never. Yeah. You know, I had some nevers. And... For people, I had a guy who had never played catch, and he was he was in his early 50s. And for somebody that's lived his whole life and never done it, and to have whatever in him tell him, I should go play catch with that guy. <laughs> like, really cool for me. So yeah. anytime I was somebody's first catch, that was, that was special mm-hmm. for me. 
Um, I had a million people say, oh, I don't remember the last time I played catch, but it was with my dad when I was little, and this makes me feel like that, and yeah. I can remember, you know, my dad and, and uh, or, you know, or their kids. or And those stories just happened all the time. I had a lady reach out to me, and she said, I saw your story on the news. I think it's really cool. I'd love to play catch with you. I don't have a glove. Do you have an extra? I said, yep, I have extras. I'll meet you in this park. And so I show up, and she has a glove. And I said, oh, you, you got a glove. And she says, I knew I had one from when I was a little girl. And she was my age-ish. She said, I knew I had one from when I was a little girl. And it bothered me that I couldn't find it. So she said, I went in the attic and I started looking. It took me two hours. It was in the last box that I looked at. And she says, I pull out the glove. And she showed it to me. And, and it had from, she goes, the last time I had this, I was 12. And it had her name and phone number written on it in her handwriting as a 12-year-old. <laughs> And she said, the last time I used this glove was playing catch with my dad. And she said, you know, and he, he's not here anymore. He passed away. And so she says, I pull the glove out of the box and I just start crying. And I'm sitting in the attic crying for half an hour. My husband heard me, came out there. He, thought I, yeah. he thought I got bit by a rat or something, <laughs> stepped on a nail. And she said, uh, and I just, I, it was emotional. And so she brought it. We played catch. It was wonderful. We had a great, great time. We get done, we take a picture, off she goes. A couple weeks go by, and I get a message from her. And she says, hey, do you remember me? You know, and I said, yep. I, you know, and she says, I just wanted to tell you that that catch changed my life. And I was like, you know, okay, how, right? Yeah. And she said, I got home that night, and I couldn't put the glove away. I couldn't go put it back in the box. I just, I didn't know what to do with it. Wasn't planning on using it again. I just couldn't put it away. And so she said, I just set it on the kitchen counter. She says, I have a 12-year-old son, not a sports kid, never played baseball, not his thing. A couple of days, the glove's sitting there. He comes in and he says, Mom, what's that? And she says, that's the glove I had when I was a little girl. Used to play catch with your grandpa. And he says, can I play catch with you? And she's like, <laughs> you know, and she says, I just yeah. want you to know that Every day, my son comes home from school, and we play catch for five minutes. That's amazing. And she's like, I can't thank you enough. And again, like, what do you do with that but feel good? Right. And, and that's not me. Like, yeah. I didn't do anything. But this silly experiment, this game, baseball, you know, I get romantic about baseball. But there is something about it. And for that to make that difference for her and her son, and the coolest part is, Connor, I have – like I have a couple hundred of those type of stories. They just kept happening. Yeah. And for a long time I would fight it. Like like it's just plain catch. And eventually I I couldn't fight it anymore. You have to embrace it. You have to, right? Yeah. And like we talked about earlier, who am I to tell anybody that it's not important or inspirational or means something to them? And I learned really quickly it's not just plain catch. It, these things kept happening and uh, really humbling to be a part of. Yeah. That's amazing. Is, uh, is Ethan still playing catch? So Ethan plays catch a ton. He's kind of Mr. Catch 365. He stopped. He doesn't have okay. an active streak. He doesn't have the streak going. No. In yeah. fact, it's funny. Cause I asked him when, when we met in Kansas city, um, I asked him, I said, did you stop? And he said, yeah, I did. And he goes, I kind of regret it. He goes, I play catch all the time. It's still a big part of my life. He's, he's out promoting his book often, and he's, he speaks at things, and he's a, he's a huge proponent of playing catch. He goes, I just, I just didn't. Mm -hmm. And since I started, I know of three or four other people who I've come in contact with through Ethan or social media that did it, did 365, and they all stopped, and, which is fine, right? And as I got closer to 365, I wasn't sure what to do. I wasn't sure if I should stop. Like, are people tired of it? Am I tired of it? And it really came down to, to me, you know, it, Ethan saying, I, I regret stopping. And then me, it's something I did every day. It's something I look forward to every day. Mm -hmm. I like to do it. I love to do it. And I didn't, it would have been weird to just not do it. Yeah. And so I decided to just keep going. And, um, I was calling it Catch 365, and I stopped doing that. Now I call it Catch Every Day. And I, I'm not as obsessed with finding somebody different every day. Mm -hmm. um, Just playing catch. I, I look. 
you know, I look, I still ask strangers. Mm-hmm. I pulled over the other day and asked a, a stranger and um, people still reach out, not as often as they did, but people will still reach out and be like, hey, you still doing this? And, mm-hmm. and we play. Um, but I'll go through the day and if nothing presents itself, I just grab my glove and go out in the backyard with my kid or my wife and play catch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of me being a baseball nerd and a stat guy, right? I joked with you earlier, (laughs) player on a streak has to respect the streak. Right. There is a part of me that, you know, I've played 485 days in a row. (laughs) That's kind of cool. And maybe someday that'll be a thousand or 1200. The on base streak. Yeah. Right. You got to kind of keep it going. So, um, I, it just became something I didn't want to stop. And so, um, why right. stop? And I'll tell you an, another story, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so the day after I played with Griffey, I had the opportunity to play with Bob Kendrick, who's the president of the Negro League Baseball Museum, wow. which was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, what a cool man. And somebody that I've looked up to, and what a cool guy. And, like, you can't say no. Like, hey, I didn't you see? I'm done. You know? <laughs> So the next day after that, 367, I had a guy reach out to me and he said, hey, are you still doing this? I said, yeah, I think so. I mean, I did yesterday. And he said, I would love to play catch with you. He said, I I reached, I actually reached out to you like in December, but I just wasn't the right time. And I thought that's kind of a weird thing to say. What, why? Mm -hmm. And I asked him why. And he said, I was in the hospital. I was like, oh, yikes. And I said, are you, was it serious? He goes, yeah, I almost almost didn't make it. He said, I was in the hospital for a month, you know, six weeks, and touch and go there for a little bit. And, and he said, you know, in the hospital, you don't really sleep. They come in all night, and they're poking you and doing stuff. And I was in a bad way for a little bit. He said, every night I'd lay there, two or three in the morning, and I'd look at my phone, and I'd go to Twitter. And the first thing I would look at is your thing. And I would see who you played catch with. And he said, some were funny. Some were inspiring, some were cool, some were ordinary. But, and then I would go and read some of your past ones. And he said, it just, there was just something about it. It just made me feel good. I looked forward to it every night. He said, and I made a goal to get out of the hospital and play catch with you. And I said, wait, time out. (laughs) I said, you're in the hospital dying. And some stupid thing I'm doing. I've got to go play catch. Right? (laughs) Some stupid thing I'm doing made a difference and he goes more than you'll ever know and he said i tried as hard as i could to get out and be a part of the first 365 he goes and i just i just missed it by a couple of days and he said so thank you for not stopping because i would have hated to miss it by a couple of days wow and i thought you know and that was emotional for me i told you i'm a crier right and so (laughs) that's emotional for me and i thought i didn't know this guy's story I had no idea when he reached out to me of any of this. How tragic would it have been for me to tell him, no, I'm done. Right. Right. Yeah. For, for it to mean what it meant to him. And for me to be like, you know, hey, I'm, didn't you see? I played with Ken Gravy Jr. I'm, d- I'm <laughs> done. You know, that would have been awful, I think. And that kind of confirmed to me that there are still people out there that want to be a part of it. There are still stories to tell. There are still people that want to play. I still want to play. Um, so it kind of confirmed to me that I should keep going. And I've had a few, I guess we're on 120 extra days now. And I've had multiple, multiple experiences that have kind of reiterated that I, I was meant to meet this person. I was meant to play catch with this person and I wouldn't have had, I stopped. So, um, kind of a long answer to your question, but, um, just hit home to me that, I should probably keep going. And as long as it's something I like to do, um, I'm going to just keep playing. You have to keep it going for the people. (laughs) (laughs) Which is funny to me. Right. And, and I, and people, people say that and I kind of joke with them and, and, uh, and this is going to sound weird, but I really tried not to make it about me. And that's awkward to say because I did it and I posted about it and I wrote stories about it. So I kind of made it about me, but it never felt that way to me. It always felt like it was about whoever I was playing catch with. I honestly just thought I'm throwing the ball. Right. And the story is who's catching it and throwing it back. And just so many remarkable people and, and experiences and, you know, whether it was, you know, the, the guy with the stroke or my dad or my kid, just 
I mean, I can't tell you how many nights I went in the backyard and played catch with my son, and we didn't say a word. You know, he's 18, ready, just graduated high school, thinks dad's weird, ready to go do his own thing. You know, not a sports kid, not a baseball kid, and he wants to play catch with me? Like, what's, what's better than that? The next thing will be playing catch on Father's, Father's Weekend in Pullman right? with him in Pullman. That'll be cool. We were there. We took him last weekend up to Orientation Weekend. And him and my wife and I were driving around the campus. And my wife and I went to school there, you know, and, and yeah. we met there. And so we drove, we did the, you know, we drove to, this is where your mom and I met. And this is where we had our first date. And he was kind of rolling his eyes a little bit. But we went to his dorm where he will be living as a freshman. He'll be living in Stimson Hall. And uh, we got out of the car and I played catch with him in front of Stimson. And I just thought, you know, in two months, I'm going to bring you here and leave you. Right. And it's going to be really hard for mm-hmm. me to do that. So it was nice to be there with him and to play catch and, and those type of things. You can't like that's, I mean, Griffey's cool. Celebrities are cool. These stories are cool. But the times that I've played with, with my sons, um, that's, that's, you know, what's better than that. Absolutely. Yeah. I do want to get into a couple more of your stories. Um, sure. One, the stick stadium. Yeah. And then after that, we can get into the, the big 365 and what that entire experience was. Sure, sure. So one of the one of the things that people ask me all the time is, was it hard to go ask strangers, right? Because we don't do that very often. And and I'm, I'm a pretty outgoing guy. I guess you maybe have to be to just ask random people to play catch. And one of the things that I think is amazing about this story is um, in 365 days and continuing now to 485 days, Hundreds and hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds of strangers. I got told no one time, one time. And I don't know what that is, right? Because I'm asking <laughs> strangers. And uh, we joked earlier about, you know, it's a big guy approaches you out of nowhere. Hey, <laughs> you know, you're kind of cute. You want to come over, <laughs> want to come over by my van yeah, and see yeah. the baseball glove? <laughs> and so I don't know what that is other than there's something about play and catch and you you alluded to it earlier we do it when we're kids or we do it with our dad or growing up so for whatever reason there was something about hey would you play catch with me that people yeah okay and so we're in Seattle and you know Mariner Nerd uh, Six Stadium is where kind of the, the Seattle Pilots played in 1969 kind of where the Mariners were born right if you want to look at it and I'm a I'm a history guy I'm a baseball history guy and I had always heard never been there But I had always heard that it's a Lowe's home improvement store now. (laughs) And I always heard that around back, they have a little thing in the ground where um, home plate was. And I thought, that's super cool. Like, one, I want to see it. And how cool would it be to play catch with somebody there? Yeah. So we're up in Seattle one weekend, and I told my wife, hey, let's go find this. And so we did. And it was kind of in a rough, rougher area of Seattle. And she's like, I'm staying in the car. So I went around back. It's a loading dock, and I'm looking around, and they had a little stand there. Some guy was selling hot dogs to the construction workers, and they had some tables. And I'm looking around, and I find home plate. It's right there in the ground. It looks like home plate. And there's a little plaque there. It says, on this site, six stadium, Mm -hmm. you know, da-da-da. And I'm like, wow, super cool. There's a guy sitting there eating a hot dog. And I'm like, dude, I'm asking this guy. (laughs) And nobody had told me no yet. So I guess I got cocky, (laughs) right? And so – I said to him, hey, do you know what this is all about here? And he's like, whatever. You know? <laughs> and that should have been my first clue that this dude isn't, yeah. isn't into this. And so I said, I explained to him, hey, this is where blah, 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 Six Stadium. He could care less. And I said, I'm doing this thing. Is there any way you could play catch with me? He's like, nah, I'm good. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, like, you don't even have to get up. Like, I'll just, I'll just toss you the ball, yeah. toss it back, and we'll, we'll count that. He's like, bro. I'm good. And he got up and left. Man. And I was like, wow, like that's yeah. right. It's that's not, not his day. I not guess. his day. Yeah. Like that's what rejection feels like. I had nobody had told me no. So while I'm standing there licking my wounds, I hear a voice off to the side and it's this guy. And he says, bro, I'll play catch with you. <laughs> and I turn and look and it's this dude. And he looked like he had had a couple of rough nights. He had the biggest black guy oh, man. I've ever seen. And he goes, I'll play catch with you. I heard your story. I'll do it. And I was like, are you a baseball fan? He goes, no, but when I was eight years old, my mom brought me here to six stadium and I saw Jimi Hendrix. Wow. Play. And I was like, what? (laughs) Time out. Full circle right there. Right. And he goes, he goes, um, I was eight. 
stage was right there. Hendrix was right there. It was a couple months before he died. It was the last show he ever played in Seattle. Wow. Like, and I was like, you were there? Like, I go, I go Will you tell me about it while we play catch. So I played catch with this guy at a, behind a Lowe's, feet away from where he saw Jimi Hendrix when he was eight years old. And I just thought, like, that's how cool is that? Mm -hmm. he, he remembered songs that were played. He remembers his friend. He remembers, you know, the people there. And, and, uh, just a really cool moment. And so I go around to, uh, we get done and, and I go to leave and I said, Hey, can we take a picture? And, and he goes, he looks at me and goes, you're not going to give it to the cops. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, just Twitter. I, I said, yeah, no, it's just for me. I, I, don't, I don't know that I mentioned that I tweet him out, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I went back to the car and my wife was like, well, you were gone for a while. How did it go? And I said, well, I got told no. And she's like, what? That never <laughs> happens. I said, yeah, but then, and I told her about that. So that's wild. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So, um, like I said, not, not baseball related, but to have that experience and, and not only for him to be able to share that story, but really cool for me to hear somebody talk about seeing Jimi Hendrix. And you don't know until you start a conversation. Yeah. You know, and and that's wild. right. And, and kind of the, I think I invented it, but kind of the phrase that I have adopted during this is that I use all the time is it's just a catch until it's not. And you never know until you throw the ball. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, at worst, I'm playing catch with somebody. And sometimes it's more than that. And in this case, I had a pretty cool moment with this guy uh, getting to relive seeing Jimi Hendrix. I was like, how was that? And he goes, bro, it'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> Even at eight years old, I guess. Right, yeah. at eight years old, I guess <laughs> Hendrix was that good. So, um, so really cool for me, kind of where the Mariners were born, but yeah. also as a rock and roll fan and Jimi Hendrix, that was, that was kind of a fun one for yeah. sure. And then building into uh, 365. So at what point, you know, along the journey that first year, did it start to become something that gained the traction to where you were realizing that something like this might happen or when did that, you know, concept come to be? Sure. So people would joke with me or not joke. People would ask me all the time, especially once it got on the news, um, I, I was a, in day 140 ish. Um, the news got a hold of it and did a really good story. Channel Eight did a really good story, and then uh, some other news outlets did it, and um, and then it kind of became a thing. People would, oh, you're the guy from the news, or they would reach out, and so it's it started to gain traction, I guess. Um, I never in a million years thought it would end like that right mm -hmm. it's it's silly yeah right that you that's from a movie right yeah. do the math it doesn't yeah. add up <laughs> um and as we would go people would ask me especially as we got closer they were like how are you going to end it what are you going to do on 365 like you can't just you know play with dave the mailman on 365 <laughs> and i would joke with them i said look I, I get romantic about baseball if i could write the hollywood script it would be my baseball hero ken griffey jr at safeco field or t-mobile park and, but that's ludicrous to even think about. So back up a little bit. So I have a friend. I actually met Griffey one time years and years ago at a golf tournament. And the guy that set up that meeting uh, works for Nike. His name's Ryan. And we really good, we've really become really good friends. And he was a huge supporter of Catch 365. He thought it was, was awesome. And we played catch a couple times. And I played catch with his kids and his dad and his parents. And he would, he would set up friends and acquaintances to come play catch with me was a really big supporter of it. And he's friends with Griffey. Like he's like, I have his number in my phone friend. Yeah. And I would tease him like, Hey, you know, <laughs> like hook me up. Yeah. Right. And he would kind of laugh. And so last September was my wife and I's 25th wedding anniversary. And we were going to go to Hawaii and we ended up not being able to go. And so we were like, yeah, what? she's from Seattle. She grew up there. And so I'm like, let's just go to Seattle. We'll spend the weekend up there. Low key. Hey, the Mariners are in town. Mm -hmm. She's like, Oh, surprise. You know, <laughs> You know, just what she wants to do is spend you our totally anniversary. didn't plan this, did right? You? <laughs> spend our anniversary at the Mariner game. Yeah. So without me knowing, she hears like a couple of days before on the Mariner broadcast on Root Sports, they mention, you know, Griffey will be in town this weekend doing something for the team. She finds that out somehow without me knowing about it. She calls Ryan behind my back and she says, "Hey, we're going to be in Seattle. It's our 25th wedding anniversary. Wow. Is there any way?" This would be the greatest anniversary gift of all time. I never have to get him another gift. Right, right. Right. And she's right. Yeah. Right. And so um, he says, well, I mean, I'll ask. 
So the story goes that he calls Griffey and says, I don't remember this guy, but years ago you met him, he caddied in, da, da, da. And he sent him one of the news clips. And Griffey watched it and said, oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's, that's cool. What day is this in the 365? And, and Ryan says, I don't know, it's like 270 something. And Griffey goes, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and so Ryan goes, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awkward, <laughs> right? And Griffey goes, I'll do it, but I'm not going to be some random number. He goes, I'll do it, but I'm the last day. I'll do yeah. 365. <laughs> and I'm like, how freaking cool is that? Yeah. So Ryan calls me, tells me this story. I freak out. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm like, where are we going to do it? He's like, well, he said, come to his house. So he lives in Orlando. So we come to his house and go to Florida. So my wife and I bought plane tickets to Orlando. So we were going to go to Orlando to Griffey's house and play catch with him, which is ludicrous. Yeah. And so I don't tell anybody because I don't want to jinx it. And I'm, and I was kind of trying to keep it a surprise and I wanted it to be a thing. And we get about a month away and uh, I'm on Twitter and I see that there's some, it's the Seattle, sports award thing there's some organization up there that has a yearly award it's a big deal up there i guess and they're given their they're at their award banquet they're given the humanitarian icon big their big award mm-hmm. they're going to give it to griffey and this article says he'll be here to accept it and i look at the date it's the day before it's 364 man and i'm like oh you know. <laughs> so i called my friend ryan i said we got a problem problem is i got a plane ticket to orlando <laughs> griffey will be in seattle and he goes oh boy like, <laughs> so he calls griffey and he says what do we do and griffey says oh just tell him to come to seattle i'll get the stadium yeah like it's that easy <laughs> right like he has keys uh, yeah right 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 and so that's what we did we drove up the night before we stayed in the silver cloud hotel across the street mm-hmm. uh we, we woke up the next morning we got a phone call at like 10 from griffey and he's like hey i'm over here just come over Man. Go into the main door, tell the security guard. So we walk across the street like I've done a thousand times. Yeah. We walk into the, the main lobby. There's a security guard there. And he says, oh, are you Griffey's guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Can That's you, us. Can you say that again? <laughs> yeah. Please, I'd like to hear that again. He's like, have a seat. He calls somebody. Hey, they're here. Hangs up. We sit down. A couple minutes go by. The elevator dings. Ding. We turn around and the door's open and. Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. And he comes out and he gives Ryan a hug and he's like, comes over, shakes my hand, gives me a hug. I introduce him to my wife and son. He says, you ready to do this? <laughs> yeah. We ride the elevator down. We walk through the player's tunnel out onto the field. And I played catch with my hero. Uh, wow. Couldn't have been any nicer. Couldn't have, stayed for about an hour. Never in a hurry. Never in a rush. Um, talking to my wife, talking to my kid. He played catch with both of them just surreal unbelievably surreal it doesn't it doesn't add up right if you do the math that doesn't add up (laughs) i'm I'm in my yard with my son at night in the rain and 365 days later i'm in my favorite place to be the ballpark with my hero playing catch yeah and you just doesn't add up right and uh but that i guess that's why we play sports right is you you hit walk off home runs happen and and hail marys happen and um, perfect game happened last night right and, yeah and you just never know when you never know something. and it and it happened it happened for me so unbelievably cool for him to do that he didn't have to he could have just said hey it didn't work out you know so for him to not only agree to do it but be willing to do it be willing to change his plans and organize it to be at the stadium I uh, just silly yeah. so I still can't believe it happened yeah. Un- unbelievable you right? have a picture framed somewhere I I'm do sure, yeah. in fact it's funny because and I'm, I may have shared this with you. Um, we get done, and he had br- he had a ball. And the ball that we had used, he, he had. And so I said, hey, can I have the ball? He goes, yeah, do you want me to sign it? I'm like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So he writes, to John, day 365, Ken Griffey Jr. gives me the ball. And my son had brought something. He's like, Dad, do you think Griffey would sign something for me? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he would. So my son had brought something, and we had a couple of Sharpies. And I said, uh, Junior, would you mind signing for my – oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And so he looks at the bag, and he says, hey, do you have a silver marker? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, let me see it. So I give him the silver marker, 
and he takes off his glove. Ken Griffey Jr. embroidered, man. little swingman logo. 24. Yeah. The, the glove he used to play catch with me. Yeah. And he turns it over and he signs it. And he goes, here, I want you to have this. And I'm just like, yeah, that's insane. my son's like, don't cry. And I'm like, too late, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, too late. <laughs> and so again, didn't have to do it. Didn't have to do any of it. Um, unbelievably cool for him to do that. I still can't believe that happened. So in my, I have a pretty good man room. I have a, I collect that kind of stuff. I have a, I have a pretty good collection of memorabilia and things. And um, so I have the glove, I have the ball, and then I have a picture of, him and I on the field. It's the screensaver on my phone. Yeah. There you so go. like I'm at the store and I'm just like, <laughs> that's me right there. Hey, if you, <laughs> Oh, that's me and Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. So yeah, really, really cool. Unbelievable that, that it ended that way. Unbelievable that it happened that way. Um, very lucky. Awesome. Yeah. Well, an amazing story. Um, I really appreciate your time and, yeah. and uh, being able to get this on camera. Yeah. And uh, anyone out there that's looking to play catch, I, where, where can they find you? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's an ongoing effort, right? So the best place to find me is on Twitter. And uh, my, my Twitter handle is just my last name, at J Sukanek, um, S-C-U-K-A-N-E-C. If you Google Sukanek and Catch365 or, or even probably Catch365, yeah. at this point, it'll come up. You'll see uh, some of the news stories and some of the – stuff that the media did mm -hmm. about it. So probably pretty easy to find, but um, I'd love it. I, I'm still looking for people to play catch with. I'm still doing it every day. So if you see this and you're, you want to play catch, even if you're not in the immediate area, I'll come to you or you can come here. Or we'll... I have people all the time that are like, next time you're at a baseball game. Right. You know, I had people in Pullman. Hey, next time you're in Pullman. Yeah. So we'll make it work. Um, hit me up on Twitter, at Jay Sukanik, and, uh, and love to have a catch. Thanks again, John. And uh... – yeah, really looking forward to seeing how your story progresses throughout the coming years because I know it'll continue. We'll keep going. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Like I said, one of the cool things for me in this is I've gotten to meet and have be friends with so many people I may not have ever, yeah. you know. And and we re you reached out to me and we ended up playing catch and that turned me on to the Couch GM and your <laughs> your stuff that you do and and I love talking Mariners. So. Yeah. Um, we'll so, have you on again to, to uh, really nerd out on some baseball. I'd love to. Yeah. Anytime. I'd love to do it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you bet.